Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where today we are going to do a video that is all about self-reliance. And we're going to be discussing 10 deadly winter heating mistakes. And this was prompted by an event that came through my news feed, oh, it has been several weeks ago, um, about th dangerous things that have happened so far this winter uh, with people who are using extra heating devices like space heaters in their homes. Now, it might be very interesting to note that according to um, statistics, uh, one of the articles that I read stated that half of the home fires in the U.S. occur during the months of December, January, and February. Well, we are still in that time frame right now. And of those fires that occur in the wintertime, half of them are from space heaters, heaters that are added by people to um, augment whatever heating system they have in their house. There are all kinds of space heaters on the market. And, um, and so we need to be very, very careful if, as we think about purchasing those. I, um, when I was working, my office in the wintertime had a great big window toward my back and it was very, very cold, especially in the um, space underneath my desk where my knees to my feet were always parked because I was sitting in my chair. So I got a little space heater and plugged it in underneath my desk to keep that little cubby area uh, warm for my feet. And um, on more than one occasion, as I would shift around and move from my desk to my computer and my chair would swivel around, I knocked that heater over. And so it is really, really important that we have space heaters, if we have them, that have safety features. Now we're gonna go over 10 mistakes that people make during the wintertime when they are trying to stay warm. And I recognize that staying warm is a problem for a lot of people. Um, and so we can do it safely, but here are some things that we really do need to avoid. First of all, Number one, and these are not in any particular order, and they're not the most dangerous to the least dangerous because every one of them can become very life-threatening. Not knowing how to safely operate your space heater or your off-grid heater, whatever it is you might bring into your house over the winter time to help augment the heating systems that you have. Now we have this little space heater right here and it is a Buddy Flex from the Mr. Heater line. It works really, really well as a space heater in the winter time, but we have not had to use it for a couple of years. And I have forgotten how it operates. And so playing back here with the, with the um, knobs and everything, just flying by the seat of my pants is a very dangerous thing to do. Um, as I brought it in from the garage, I noticed that some leaves had blown in here. Well, this is the heating element right here. And here are these leaves and there are some spider webs on this grid right here. So if I would not have seen those and then just tried to operate this, that would have caused a little fire right here. So be sure that, that you have your instruction book handy and that you know completely how to operate safely your um, heating unit, whatever it is that you might have. The second one on our list is not choosing a space heater that has some safety features on it. Now, the safety features that are recommended, and I went to a lot of different websites, official websites from various towns and states that have um, deer, deeply cold winters and got a lot of lists of things to, for people, for all of us to watch out for. And, um, and one of those is that uh, we need to choose space heaters with some of these safety features. It needs to have a thermostat where the heat is controlled. It needs to have an automatic shutoff. If it accidentally gets tipped over, then the fire or the flame or the heat should shut off just immediately. And there also should be um, a, a safety shutoff if the surrounding area gets too hot. Um, one of the very sad articles that I read about a, a death by accident in a, a heating incident, it wasn't about a fire, 
but it was about an older couple, elderly is how the term was. I'm beginning to resent that term because <laughs> we're there. <laughs> we're headed into our 80s pretty quickly, and this couple was an older couple in their 80s, and their furnace was... Um, uh, not operating correctly. So a family men member came over and made some adjustments and looked at it and thought everything was okay. And they didn't hear from this older couple, so they sent um, police over to do a welfare check. Well, the furnace had turned on and had not shut off. And it just kept heating and heating and heating and heating. The internal temperature in that home was 120 degrees. And of course, the couple had passed away. And I just thought, that is just so sad because it is so preventable. And that was the story that um, triggered my thinking about doing a video on safety during winter heating time. Then um, uh, the other, another thing, this is number three on our list, is not checking your smoke alarms. Every home should have smoke alarms in every one of the important rooms in the house, in the kitchen, in, in the hallways, in the bedrooms. Every bedroom should have one. And then check those batteries, test those batteries every single month. If you have not checked your batteries in your smoke alarms, it's time to do it. And then the other thing to have is a carbon monoxide um, alarm. We use this one all the time in our videos. You've seen this a lot. Whenever I do my little propane burner on my countertop right here, we have this right beside it. And here is the reason why. You know, we have dual furnaces in this house. Half the house is heated by one furnace, half by the other. And it is a propane furnace. Now, we, there is in our furnace system and yours a, an, a fresh air intake that is built in and part of the furnace system. Because any time there is a flame uh, going, it is consuming oxygen. Well, we also need oxygen as human beings. We have to have oxygen in order to survive. And every winter there are um, casualties with people who have gone winter camping, have put heaters in their tent, those heaters have consumed all of the oxygen and the people die of asphyxiation. So the same thing is true within our homes. If we have a heater, now this doesn't have an open flame, it's a, um, it, it, it sort of, it heats up to where it's red hot and it would, it would burn these leaves, it would consume oxygen, um, but it is not like an open flame. We have to be very, very careful with those open flames. But it consumes oxygen. And our house is pretty airtight. But this is not piped to where it has a fresh air intake anywhere. It just pulls from the room. And so do any kind of a heater that has any kind of a, a flame or a flame-like structure for uh, giving off heat. And so it's... It, when the carbon monoxide gets too high in the room because the oxygen is being removed or if it's generating carbon monoxide, this alarm will go off. And you always want to have, when you have an open flame heater of any kind, crack a window somewhere to let more fresh air oxygen into your home. So that's one thing we really need to be mindful of. Jim is such a stickler on that. And that's our fourth one, is to provide ventilation for open flame heaters to be sure that you have enough oxygen there. Um, we also have a fireplace. Many of you have fireplaces, which means we have a chimney. Anytime we, we burn wood or anything in our fireplace, it is going to leave layers of soot on the inside of that chimney. And so not having our chimneys cleaned out periodically, every year, every other year, be sure that we have a clean operating system for our, um, our fireplaces and other heating equipment. And those should be checked annually. One of, the thing that, one of the things that was emphasized by a lot of the towns and states that I checked on was that we should have our heating equipment checked annually by an expert not just a family member who is a, a good person and means well, but someone who actually knows. In our lifetime, Jim and I have both learned how important it is to hire expertise for very important things. When I go to the dentist, my general dentist does not do my root canals. I go to an endodontist to, for that because I had a general dentist do a root canal once 
and then he couldn't finish it, so he had to send me to an endodontist. The difference between how those two highly skilled people worked on a, a, a highly technical part of dentistry, the difference was night and day. And so going to experts who have lots of experience in that area is really important, and the same thing is true with heating and cooling. And they're certified and licensed. Right, certified and licensed, Jim said, in case you didn't hear that. Then another thing that was in just every single thing that I read, every article that I read was to keep a three-foot space all around your heating. So my little space heater uh, underneath my desk did not follow that rule, and I could have caused a fire. Thankfully, it never happened. My little space heater had an automatic shutoff. It was just a tiny one. It was electric, and, uh, but every time it turned over, it shut off. So that was a good thing. Now, in this three-foot space uh, surrounding um, a heater, a space heater or whatever, we should not have anything combustible. I love to wrap up in a quilt. When our house gets a little bit cold, I have a big old thick comforter that I wrap up in and sit on the couch when we watch TV or whatever. Well, if I'm wrapped up in a quilt and I also have a space heater nearby, I need to be very, very sure that the corner edges of that quilt are not within that three feet safety space surrounding the source, the heat source. Also in that three foot heat space, there should never be any human being, no children or pets or anything else that is combustible. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Another um, do not do is do not use anything but the prescribed fuel for your heating. And so if you have a wood fireplace, then we burn wood. This is a propane heater, we burn propane. We don't mix fuels or do anything that is not recommended. And keep your instruction booklet because um, those instruction booklets will say um, it is dangerous to use anything but the prescribed fuel. Now one that um, I was reminded of, I never do this, we never do it, I grew up in a home where my father was adamant that it never is done, is overloading um, outlets, wall outlets. Now I have some pictures that I've taken from the internet. I love this example because it is really overkill on what I think any of us would ever think about doing. We know how dangerous this is, and yet people do it. And uh, especially when we have power strips that have five or six places to plug things in. Just because they are those fancy power strips does not mean that we need to plug, that we, that we can safely fill any, every single one of those outlets with something else and be safe because that is also overloading uh, what the circuit was intended to carry. So here are some other pictures. Here is a power strip that has, I think, four, is it? It looks like four. One, two, three, four, five. Is it five? That has five plugs in it, and it has already started a fire. Now imagine if this were in your home, and this happened in the middle of the night. So this is a good reminder in the first place not to do this, and in the second place to be sure that we have our smoke alarms in place so that we would be warned and awakened if something like this happened. Here is another power strip fire. I've never seen anything like these pictures. This has never happened to us, thankfully, and I hope it has never happened to you either. But we need to be careful with power strips not to overload them. Those of us that have electric space heaters, we need to be sure that they plug directly into the wall socket. No extension cords, that is also quite dangerous and uh, starts fires, so um, just be mindful of that. Um, because we are preparing for the possibility of the grid being down, we don't use electric space heaters of any kind. We like to have our space heaters off-grid in the event that we may need them when the grid goes down. 
And then the last thing, the number 10 on our list is that, and, and this one I found a little bit surprising um, because, well, I guess because I'm guilty of doing it. And that is not unplugging and turning off your space heater when you leave the room or when you go to bed. So the recommendation is not to leave space heaters going during the time that you are sleeping. Uh, pile your bed up with quilts to stay warm rather than having a space heater going. And that could also be very dangerous. I used to leave the little space heater underneath my desk going when I left my office and I would go to meetings, I'd be gone an hour or two hours, come back and oh, it was so cozy and warm under there. But my gosh, I could have started a fire, burned down the university. I was in the president's and the provost's office suite, so I would have burned down the hub of the university if that would have gone up in flames in my, in my office. And so we need to remember that we turn things off, unplug them when we leave the room or when we go to sleep. And we need to be especially mindful of pets and children. So that concludes the top 10 lists of um, deadly, deadly things that we need to avoid when thinking about uh, doing emergency heating or augmenting our regular heating systems during the winter months. Here is my list of 10 things, and Jim has just suggested that we post this on our website. So I will post it on the opening page of our website. Just go to our website and scroll down to where it says uh, downloads, and it will be um, on the download list so that you can download and have this. And I'll keep it up there for um, the month of February. Um, I can only post 15 things at a time, so I have to rotate through things. So it will be there through February. So let's just all remember safety first and be mindful of what's going on around you. Practice these safety issues and avoid all of these things that are on our do not do list. So thank you so much for being with us and we will see you soon for many more videos.